This is a video for BTEC Applied Science Unit 20, Medical Physics Techniques. And this is the video for D1 in 20.2. And for D1, what we need to do is analyse the effect of the operation and design of an X-ray tube on the X-ray spectrum. Okay, so what's an X-ray spectrum? That's the first thing we need to establish. Let's draw it here. It's a graph. And along the bottom here, we have photon energy. So a photon is a packet of X-ray energy. And if you have high, um, high energy X-rays, we're talking about high photon energies. And here we have intensity. So basically, if you plotted a straight line here, okay, then for this photon energy, we get this much energy. For this photon energy, we get more intensity. So photon energy, intensity, photon energy, intensity. The higher the intensity, more of them you get. So we get more high energy photons here and hardly any low energy ones. So let's reverse that graph. Let's say it went down like this, but now you get fewer of the uh, fewer of the high energy ones, more of the low energy ones. So that's what it, it's like. Well, that's how you use the graph. You go up to the graph line from your photon energy, you cross the higher the intensity, the more you get. So that's the general principle. But X-ray spectra are not straight lines; they're more complicated. So let's have a look. Let's fill in those lines. If you are doing this, this D1, then you're going to find this textbook very useful. You're definitely going to want to get this out. Uh, so you want to start looking at the book from page 31 to 34. Okay, so you're going to see the spectra that I'm uh, from this textbook. I'm about to show you the general principle of those spectra. So that's the Gene Pope book, page 31 to page 34. Definitely want to check that out. Okay, so what does it look like? That's a typical X-ray spectrum. There is one on the assignment brief, and there is also one on the handout. The one on the handout is annotated. And you notice it's a curve, generally. So you're getting most the highest intensity roughly in the middle. However, these intensity peaks here, these characteristic lines, they're sometimes called, they may go higher than that peak. So we've got Intensity peaks, often they're used to give you the exact or the highest proportion of photons that you want for a given situation. Okay. Uh, the curve just shows you what the intensity is for a given photon energy as we were doing earlier. It's going up to the line and then across. We've got a low intensity for this photon energy. We also have a low intensity for those high energy photons there. We've got a much higher energy if we go up roughly in the middle there, so in that mid-range photon energies, we've got higher intensity. Um, if you calculated the area under the graph, that area represents the total energy emitted. Okay? So you can get changes in the spectrum. I've already drawn quite a big spectrum there, so you could, if I drew it a bit smaller, that probably that peak wouldn't be so sharp. Is 
Okay, so you now have a different total energy emitted. You can see the smaller area indicating there's, a, there's less total energy being emitted for that second spectrum graph below than from the first one. Okay, so the D1 task is asking you to relate how you operate the tube and how you design the tube to the spectrum that you get. So you're going to need to draw the spectrum for different changes that you can make. So the changes that you'll need to include, they're on the handout, the type of metal used for the anode, and here you'll have to look at particularly where these intensity peaks occur. Okay? So if you look in the, uh, in the textbook, you'll see what I mean by that. The tube voltage, so the voltage that it operates at, here you're going to look at what the maximum photon energies are, where the peak occurs, and so on. You'll also have the tube current, and you, that controls how many electrons are fired at the anode plane at times. So that will affect the total area under. Look at how that affects it. Um, and then aluminium filters. The use of aluminium filters, as you can imagine by the name, it filters out some of the x-rays, so you're going to lose some of the spectrum. So which, which parts of the spectrum might be lost through the use of aluminium filters. So those are the changes. And uh, the, well, that's relating it to the spectrum. Then also you have to give an explanation of that, of what the change is. And if you read these pages in the textbook, then you'll see what those changes are. Um, what the relationships are. So if you see any proportionalities, then make sure you include those in your own words, uh, the, the explanation of this. Okay, so that is what you need to do for B1.